Hey, what's up? How you doing, everyone? It's James Romero here at Switchwatch, your home for everything Nintendo Switch related. Happy New Year to you all. I'm back today with another review, the first from me of the year, and this one is Steam World Heist, the game's brought to you by Image and Form, the same guys who brought us the awesome Steam World Dig 2, which you can check out over here. A massive shout out to the guys over there for giving us this copy for review purposes. As always, let's jump in and find out, is this one worth your hard earned cash? The Earth, broken into a million shards, forcing its steam driven inhabitants into space. SteamWorld Heist brings us back to the awesome SteamWorld universe, set a few hundred years after SteamWorld Dig 2. The Earth is now shattered and Steambots have been forced into space, working and scrapping for water, the essential need for Steambots to survive and as fuel for their ships. We take control of Captain Faraday Piper, a space pirate known as a cowbot, who starts in a tricky spot. Most of her crew have been scrapped by space scrappers and she needs to rebuild a crew get some water and move on. Along the way though, the team get drawn into a bigger tale rather than just revenge against the royalists and become unwitting heroes. It's a classic tale and the post-apocalyptic steampunk setting is perfect for it. The dialogue throughout the game is well written and funny, drawing me in. As I got further in, I cared about my crew as a captain absolutely should. Outside of a couple of short cutscenes that lay out the story, there is no voice acting in the game. Our characters communicate with written dialogue. Instead, our main audio experience comes from an epic soundtrack brought to us by Steam Powered Giraffe, a steampunk band that wrote some new tracks and tweaked existing ones to fit the universe of this game. There are 12 tracks that feature live recorded instruments and singing that works perfectly for this game and really adds to the atmosphere and environment more than we usually receive in this type of game. In fact, the band themselves feature in the game and pop up as you travel to space bars across the setting. In battle, we get a nice set of sound effects from bullets ricocheting off barrels to the sounds of a shotgun spraying, but the star here is definitely the soundtrack. The art style of the SteamWorld Universe series from image and form is both cartoony and detailed. Each bot is drawn very well and movement is handled well. It's hard to get robots to do movement this good. The main draw of the visuals is the personality of its world and characters from those in your crew to your enemies, especially the bosses. With over a hundred weapons and lots of different skills, we get to see them all in action. Some of which look epic and things like scopes and rockets look great. The way your ship boards another one is done really well as you can see the silhouettes coming together whilst controlling your character and what it does is hide loading times amongst this scenario. Enemy ships are drawn well, however they are quite similar leading to a bit of a lack of variety over time. In SteamWorld Heist you command space pirates in tactical turn based battles. Each battle takes place on a ship and you control a number of steambots. Your goals vary slightly, but broadly your aim is to kill enemies and gain loot, just like any self-respecting space pirates. What makes the battles great is that rather than most turn-based games where you line up your squad, hit attack and hope, in SteamWorld Heist you do the actual shooting by aiming your weapon at your enemies, which makes them much more engaging than they otherwise would be and more based on skill instead of luck. The controls are simple enough, the left analogue stick is used to select where to move your character, A is your general action button with B being back. Once you're in position, hitting the R button selects your action, whether that's your main weapon, a side weapon or a special skill that you have, and then the right analogue stick is used to aim. Once lined up, you hit A to shoot and you get to do this with each of your bots on your turn, then it's over to your enemy for their go. You're able to walk and perform an action in the same turn or run which takes up the whole turn but lets you travel a lot further. Each ship has a bunch of obstacles and different layouts that present challenges and opportunities when firing. For example, you cannot shoot through the main hull 
but once in a room there are platforms that you can shoot through. You can take cover behind barrels and walls which can be shot apart and so can your enemies. There are explosive barrels as well which can be blown up to great effect and different types of enemy will act differently. When porting this game over, Imogen 4 managed to introduce full touch controls that work really well. You can play the whole game in this way on the move and the game does work really nicely. And though the touchscreen is responsive, so are the controls on Joy-Cons, so I did find myself using those more often. Your bots come in a number of classes which can each use a handgun and one other of the different categories of weapon. For example, Piper herself can use sharpshooters, sniper style weapons which have a huge range but don't allow you to move and shoot in the same turn. Effective use of a sharpshooter can lead to dominating a map but it requires you to move to the right location. Whilst a player like Ivansky can use heavy weapons which tend to blow stuff up and not worry about things like cover. Getting too close will kill your own bots though so figuring out the right balance is crucial to success. One of the most interesting mechanics is the fact that bullets can bounce off of walls. Some weapons don't but a lot of them do and something like a sharpshooter lets you use a scope to see where your bullets will end up and plan outrageous trajectories for your shot that feel great when pulled off. If things a little bit harder, your bots breathe, moving the line of fire so timing things just right is important. In between missions you get to fly around in your ship and can take stock, buying weapons, accessories and hearing news from local barkeeps which often leads to missions as well as recruiting bots to join your crew. Most of this takes place in space bars and other ships along the way. As you progress you'll find a squad that you tend to lean on and as each bot levels they unlock additional skills. Sally for example was one of my favourites and gets a free shot if she kills an enemy with her first and later on can chain multiple kill shots to devastating effect with her mad dog skill. Seabrass on the other hand is particularly good in close quarters and heals a point of damage each turn with his mendability. Whilst you can drop Piper her skills are very strong, in particular her ability to make all allies stronger when they occupy a space next to her and the ability to provide a group heal are probably two of the best. So it comes down to preference and style of play as to which other two to three bots go with her depending on the mission as some missions see you flying in solo, others have two but most have three to four bots per mission. Ships are randomly generated so redoing the same mission will end up with a different layout which offers you a great way to level up bots and gain more coin which can be used to buy goods. At first this will be more powerful weapons and accessories but quite soon you'll get much better stuff from battle and will use the excess coin to purchase additional slots in your pack as you will soon run out of space with a bunch of bots to load out at any one time. I found myself having a blast heading between stages, searching for rare weapons and accessories whilst progressing the story. The balance of the game is spot on and the little details like being able to shoot a hat off your enemy and then pick it up and put it on or lining up epic shots and seeing it in slow-mo as it lands its mark are just downright fun. The Switch version is the ultimate version which as well as touch controls brings with it all DLC and new game plus modes to draw out your enjoyment past the 10 or so campaign hours. For a game that's best in class for its genre, the price of $19.99 in the US and £14.99 in the UK is fair. I experienced no slowdown, bugs or other issues and it's just a really solid game offering great value. Dean World Heist offers up over 10 hours of main campaign and it's a blast. Battles can become slightly repetitive as is normal with this type of tactical game but the fact that you are aiming, each ship is randomly generated and there is a strong story supported by excellent visuals and a toe tapping soundtrack kept me engaged from beginning to end. Along with Mario vs Rabbids this is in my opinion the best strategy game on the Switch to date for me and a must purchase. Overall then this is a solid 8.5 out of 10. Well that's it for today, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Check out our Steam World Dig 2 review if you haven't picked up that game. That is the predecessor to this, albeit a very different game. Juan reviewed that one and it was a solid 9 out of 10, one of the best games out on the Switch. 
If it's your first time here, thank you very much for checking us out. We hope you've enjoyed this. And if you want to stay up to date with everything Switch related, you might want to consider subscribing. If you want to read up our written review of this game, head over to switchwatch.co.uk and you can check that out over there. I'll see you again soon. I'm James Amero. This is Switch Watch. Take care. <laughs>